Cool. So this is the solution for the problem, non-negative integers without consecutive ones. It's all labeled hard problem. The prompt the constraint is actually very simple. What's hard is the logic behind it. The implementation is also extremely simple as I'll show. But first let's talk about the problem itself. So the goal is to find uh, given a number n, you have to find number of valid numbers between zero and n. Okay, how do you define valid numbers? Valid numbers are those numbers which do not contain consecutive ones in their binary representation. So numbers can be represented in binary. Let's say for example, five is represented as one zero one, ten is one zero one zero, so on and so forth. Pretty simple. How do you figure out uh, which numbers don't contain consecutive ones? See, the naive solution here is to iterate over all elements from zero to n, both inclusive, and check each number in constant time to if that satisfies the conditions or not, because it's fairly easy to iterate over all the bits in a given number. There's a small catch. You can't do the order of n time solution because of the constraint that n can be 10 to the power 9. It is very close to uh, or lesser than 2 to the power 30, which means that uh, we'll be using at most 30 bits for this question. That number is a bit important. We'll come back to it while the implementation. But let's actually talk about the solution now and how we think about the solution. First things to note is that since the constraint is also given in binary, let's think about the problem in terms of binary digits. Uh, take for example, a case where you've been given two bits, which can be anything. You have to find the number of valid cases in such a case. How do you do that? There can be four combinations, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. Now you know that 1, 1 is an invalid combination, so we'll remove that. The total number of valid combinations in this case is thus 3. Uh, note that I'm, I've marked it with the green lines, so if the green lines go till the end, which means it's a good sign. So 1, 2, 3, we have 3 valid solutions. What about our triple X? This means that we have 3 digits to work with or three places for binary digits could be either 0 or 1. So first uh, could be 0 or 1, then again 0, 1, 0, 1. This is how we work. And you can see again here that 1 was is invalid, so this branch is useless. Also, 1, 1 comes up here as well. So this entire uh, segment is invalid. One another thing to note is that this entire segment looks like something else we saw, which is this case. And this makes sense. We are setting the first bit here in the first x, and the rest two are just like the previous question we saw. Now, herein lies the central observation for this question. The central observation is noting that from zero, you can always generate zero and one. Also, from one zero, from one zero, you can also generate zero and one. There is no other digit from which you can generate anything else. So Say you want to think about one, okay? Why can't one generate zero and one? And that's because of the constraint that we saw. One can't have anything other than zero coming up. If it comes up one again, then the entire tree here is going to get invalid. Makes sense. Why one zero then? So look at this case. We have zero here, which we've already considered. Zero can produce zero and one, but one can only produce zero. In this case, here things become more interesting. If you take this path, you know 1, 1 is useless. That's why we don't consider 1, but we consider 1, 0. So using 1, 0, we can get to this point, which also generates 0, 1. Make sense? See, these are the two generators that we're going to use for the entire question. It's important to know both of these because we can decompose the bigger problems into smaller ones. Let's say that we are talking about four bits in this case. Now we need to make those big trees again and solve the entire thing. But as we saw, there is sort of some sort of uh, repetition. The three wala case had these guys which were being repeated from two. Four wala case will also have these three repeated. 
using the fact that we saw above 0, 1 and 1, 0 are only the two being used, you can separate data, them out into cases like this. You can say that let's start with 0 and let these three be anything. And let's start with 1, 0 and let those two be anything. Now, this is a simple recurrence relation. If you note, the answer for 4 bits is the same as the answer for 3 bits plus the answer for 2 bits. If you notice again, this is the exact same thing as we know from the Fibonacci series. f of i equals to f of i minus 1, the previous element, or I should say uh, this is the current element, this is the previous element, and this is the second previous element. And you sum both of them to get the current element. Okay, so uh, this is sort of the key part of the question. Let's actually look at a couple of examples to make this more clear to ourselves. Let's say we have the case of 1010. One, one, what do we do in this case? First thing is to note that we're living in the world of binary. And so 1010 one, can be decomposed into this and this. Why are we doing this? That's because you can say that this is 2 to the power 4 plus this is 2 to the power 2. Good. What does this mean? Uh, this means that you can find this and this and you'll get the answer for 1010. One, one, you know that the fourth bit is being activated here. This or the fourth element is being activated here and the second one is being activated here. Good. Makes sense. Uh, let's talk about this where things get a bit more interesting. We have triple one zero. Now we can decompose into or split it into triple one triple zero and one one zero. This is just like the previous case, but this presents an interesting problem. This has two repeating ones here. What does this mean? This means that uh, it's okay for you to break this down further into one triple zero plus one double zero plus ten but this part is actually useless you would never reach here and that's because all of the trees that form when you have these two what these two do is make rest of the string so you have two ones here and rest of everything now becomes invalid because you have two consecutive ones and so the last 10 is actually, or the last one zero is useless. This is the final answer for this. So you will have again answer four plus answer three. Good. This is sort of a combination of both of the above. So we need to know, okay, this is one double zero, one two three four plus one one two three four. Okay, both of these are perfectly fine because they're spaced by a zero in between with sort of protects the one from affecting anything else. Uh, you can also write uh, plus one triple zero here, but we'll never reach till this point. Wait, do we, will we actually? Oh wait, yeah, we'll actually reach this point. Uh, first one is consumed, this is fine. This zero protects it. We have one here, which we'll also consider, and this one, which we'll also consider. Anything up to this point is getting considered, but anything above it is not useful for us. So now we'll have nothing here to be considered. Uh, if you are a bit confused, that's fine. Uh, this took me even like two, three hours to fully understand. Uh, you can go look up at my uh, write up. I'll provide the link below. Now let's actually code it up and this is going to be similar to the official solution only that's in uh, Java and minus in Python. So let's do this. Okay, so first we'll need to initialize the Fibonacci series. And as I said, uh, we are going to have uh, 30 total bits since it's 10 to the power nine max. So 30 bits are needed to represent uh, a number two to the power 30, which is greater than 10 to the power nine which is what we want. Okay, now we'll do f not append. What do we want to append? The previous element and the second previous element and the sum of those will get appended. Okay, now what do we need? We need a variable answer to store whatever the answer is because we are uh, summing all of these up like so. 
but we also need to know if there are consecutive ones right if there are consecutive ones we don't consider anything and we'll just break out okay so let's have last scene here and we're going to initialize to zero okay let's iterate over the elements range of 30. by the way why did i do reversed because we're considering from this point and then going left to right uh to do the same in python you will have to do reversed otherwise we'll start from 0 to 30 which are indices which you don't want we want the opposite of it 30 to 1 30 to 0 okay uh so first things first let's check if there is one in there we'll do this by using bitwise operators we'll say okay uh, sorry shift one by i times so it'll be two to the power i we'll add it with the uh, number that is given to us and this will tell us if the ith bit is set or not if it is set then we'll do answer plus equals to f of i good uh what if uh this is what if the last scene was one which means that you've already seen one before it, just before it. This means that you've seen the second one because the current bit is also being set, is also the set bit. So what happens? Now you want to break out. I'll do one more thing here. I'll say answer minus equals to one. I'll explain why I did this later. Uh, but now let's say that, okay, what if the bit wasn't set? In that case, it means it's zero. And so the last scene is zero. Okay, now I'm going to return answer plus one. There is one small edit that we need to realize here. See, these four bits, uh, which we had x, 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 and x, x, were able to represent both of these numbers individually. But there's one small thing that also happens. See, this number itself is also a valid number. It does not have consecutive ones, which means this is also valid. So this is actually not the answer. Plus one is the right answer. Similarly, uh, for or actually opposite, these guys, both of this and this example have consecutive ones, which means that we are not going to add another one to it. And so I'm going to remove minus one here and uh, if they happen to be uh, using this break statement, which means they've seen consecutive ones, uh, they'll have a total result as the answer itself. If the case that n itself is a valid number, we'll do answer plus one. Okay, so a quick sanity check. Let's see if everything is expected. Okay, we have invalid. Oh my God. Yeah, my bad. wrong answer okay we screwed up somewhere all oh, right yeah you don't start from here you start from two all the way up till 30. see you already have two elements in place here right you don't want to uh, recalculate them finally let's hope okay wrong answer again mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have no idea what's going on. Output is four expected is three. Cool, I'll take a quick break and get back to you. Oh, I got it. Oh, I didn't set the last scene here. So last scene will set here to one and this should be it finally i'm hoping this just destroyed my submission accepted rate anyway this is 93 percent better than other people in time and memory is fine cool so uh this is it for the solution for non-negative integers without consecutive ones if the question is in terms of bits think in terms of bits that would make things a lot simpler especially keep in mind the fact that we're in the world of zeros and ones, which means two to the power of k's are very important. Cool, this is it, goodbye.